here with Naomi. She is one of my new attorney friends, and Jen's back there. She's a videographer. You see her hand? She has a cool <laughs> hand right there. So we put video on how chiropractic works into the chiropractic. What we're doing is making sure people understand what we do. As you know, when people understand what people do, it takes away the anxiety, the false fear of what they think it might be. At that point, people get confident to how to get healthy naturally in a sense where they can stay healthy even after an accident, after a trauma, um, or just overall daily life. So whenever you guys want to start, we can roll. We can go back and forth too. Not a big deal to me. It's just a Is it rolling right now? Mm -hmm. okay. So we're here with Dr. Tony. Dr. Tony at his Upland facility. Dr. Tony practices at Euclid Chiropractor and at Velez Chiropractor. I will link to their information in my description below. And Dr. Tony is a Sorry. Good time. Dr. Tony is a licensed chiropractor that specializes in family practice, scoliosis, child and adolescent care, nutritional counseling, and exercise rehabilitation. Yes. Thank Good you, Dr. Job. Tony, for being Good with job. us today. Welcome. Well, <laughs> nice to meet you again a couple times in a row. My clients would like to know a little bit more about chiropractor. I do get this question a lot that they're actually kind of scared when they go to a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. They're afraid something's gonna go wrong or they're gonna actually be worse. So if you wouldn't mind answering a few questions. And what my thing, my question first is, what's your clientele like now? What's, what do they come in with with you? What do they see you for? Most of them okay. are orthopedic injuries. Okay. We see okay. that the vast majority of the time. There are some psychological, which I don't sure. think you're counseling them as your are Don't tell them jokes, don't them. jokes. <laughs> But yes, we do get a lot of that. We do get some internal as well. Sure. But Medical stuff going on, okay. Right. But the vast majority are orthopedic okay. injuries. So more structural, more soft tissue and or joint uh, and neurological issues too. Good. That's Good. correct. Perfect. That's what I do. You're in the right place. So the first question is, sure. what physically happens when you make an adjustment, when you crack a back or a neck? What we do is release pressure. The reason is pressure builds up over time from a joint not moving properly, especially the spinal joint. Your joints are handled vertical load of your body, base gravity times weight of your, of your body mass on top of your spine. When that happens, your joints sometimes will lock up where they can't move. Because of that, it's, it normally wants to unlock on its own, yes, because of trauma, injury, stress, what will happen is the body will stay locked. It stays locked long enough, now ligaments around that joint start to tighten, tighten, tighten. That not lack of motion builds a pressure. So my job is to make those joints move. They make we call it cavitation of those joints through the adjustment to make those bones move. That release pressure over time make the ligaments and joints now stretch. So now your body goes back to its normal ability to handle the pressure on its own by staying loose, having more motion. Good, good. Um, one of the questions that's actually the main concern, <laughs> the one that my clients are like, but what if? The question is, when you're adjusting, what if they get scared or they tense up or they move at the last minute as you're doing the adjustment? What might happen? What can happen is a doctor should stop and wait. The doctor should be able to read that patient based on experience, based on time being in the field, based on seeing people over a period of hopefully months and years, realize patient's not relaxed yet. We need the patient to relax so we can cause a range of motion, moving the body left and right, for example, the neck, have a range of motion, at that point, a body now, then once the body relaxes, have them then adjust the body. The way we adjust is sometimes we get people to relax, you have them breathe. Mm -hmm. Have them, for example, tell them a quick story for one to get their mind off of it. I'll leave, I have some tricks that I normally do too that I want to spend on the camera because <laughs> I'll share my secrets of how to get them to relax too. That, once you get the first one out of the way, sorry, let's get the first one out of the way, at that point they go, okay, that's all it is, good, now I'm safe. Like the first time you're on a roller coaster, right? Like, you know what it is until you get on the roller coaster, and you have to go, okay, now I've done it, now my body won't re overreact to that, hopefully. But since sometimes I adjust people, my first adjustment is always fun for me. Because <laughs> I'm entertained. You don't know if they, they, they may cry, they may laugh, they may speak in tongues, they may have Tourette's. <laughs> they may have Tourette's. Who knows? And especially if their family's in the room, too, so they may even have a reaction also. So my job is first make it safe. Once it's safe for them, then I get them relaxed. For some way, at that point, they're going to be good to go. The next question is, yes. does it actually hurt when you're being adjusted when you feel that crack? It usually does not if it's not a severe problem. The problem is sometimes people come in and they have a lot of muscle strain along with the joint pressure. By us adjusting the joints, yes, you have to make the muscles stretch, but the muscle stretch is too far, it can make the muscles more sore. So again, it's the doctor's job, the chiropractor's job to make sure 
What point can I stretch them enough where it's not going to cause injury? Sometimes it will be sore the next day. Realize what connects the joints together, the spine, are ligaments. Ligaments, when you overstretch them more than they're used to, they can make it sore the next day. So we want to make sure we prepare our patients, let them expect this or expect this, based on their symptoms, how they're doing. Okay. The next question is, a client comes in or a patient comes yes. in and they're pretty messed up. <laughs> As I say, they're pretty messed up. You do their adjustment. They're feeling a lot better. How long can they expect the effects to last? That's, that, there's a lot of apples involved in that because everyone, every person is different. It depends on if they have a chronic injury. Chronic injury is now, ligaments and soft tissues have now adjusted that tighter spine where it's built the pressure we talked about before. We have to make those ligaments and muscles basically stretch as we adjust get the pressure off. Some come in where they have, they've been patient, for example, before, they had a problem yesterday where they left something wrong, they came in, we adjusted them, they're going to be fine. So the biggest thing is with someone being adjusted, if they're having a lot of symptomatology, a lot of muscle pain, a lot of muscle tightness, they may take longer. They have a neurological problem, but they have a problem, for example, people come in, they have numbness down their arms, pain down their leg, headaches, a lot of headaches too. Because of those symptoms, we have to, we have to everyone's different, we have to take away those problems first, and then make the spine looser, and over time, the goal, the big goal, is to make their body stronger. When they're stronger, then they can stay healthy on their own. So again, we talked about before initially what we do, we give them exercise guidance to make sure that they're doing the right things at home so they can maintain that alone to keep their body healthy and strong. Good, good. I hope so. Now, what body parts or injuries does a chiropractor able to treat? Good. Usually a chiropractor will focus on the spine, which means the back of the neck, base of the skull, down to their tailbone. Some chiropractors will also adjust the hips, adjust the shoulders, adjust the elbows, adjust the wrists, and also just the ankles and knees. Every, every chiropractor is different. And like anything, if they have practiced it enough, that becomes their art. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do it enough, that point, then you go and you're kind of guessing with anything, right? So how do you find chiropractors? When you see a chiropractor, for example, what do you do? I have a patient or you have a client that needs this, and this will find the right chiropractor that does those type of joints is the key. Mm -hmm. And what body parts or injuries will a chiropractor not touch? A lot of chiropractors, some will still, is the jaw. Some, very few will, but they'll affect sometimes the jaw. If something is, for example, there's a chance of being fractured or broken or dislocated, a fracture, a break, or dislocation we will not treat. We'd want to take an x-ray first to make sure it's not broken, torn, or dislocated, and then we may move a joint from one too. But there's very little joints, especially superficially, that we will not adjust as long as it's safe. And besides adjustments, what other treatment can a chiropractor provide? Good. Exercise guidance, how to stretch, how to strengthen, posture correction, along with balance correction too, and gait correction. A lot of our bodies when they have an injury are thrown off for a period of time, so now our bodies learn to maintain that abnormal normal for them. Mm -hmm. Get them to more of an optimal normal again by learning how to get the body to shift and reset their body over time. Good, good. Um, for a chiropractor, what kind of training do they have to be to be licensed? Are they considered doctors? Yes, we're considered doctors by the, by the nationally now. When I was in school, it was just state by state. To where there's three types of doctors in the U.S. Medical doctors, obviously, um, osteopaths, DOs, and also chiropractors. Because of that, we have to cover everything. We're licensed to see everybody. We're not licensed to treat everybody, but we're licensed to see, okay, they may have a broken bone. Let's get them to the right specialist. They may have an infection of the right specialist. So we're the first, if you want to call it portal of entry doctors, and our training comes from, if you want to call it a science background in undergraduate degrees, okay, so classes, doesn't that be a full degree, which, which they do recommend, getting a full science degree in, say, biology or chemistry or physiology. And from there, it's about three and a half years of schooling, and not three and a half years of three and a half semesters, it's year-round schooling right. of 10 semesters, 10 semesters of 10 weeks of going to school. And the reason they make it very regimented because you also have to take state boards, it's about four of them, to pass where you actually get your license, along with ethics, ethics board too through the state of California. Okay. And part of it too is even though it's regimental, not everyone passes. Half of my class I graduated with, half of them never, never finished. Half my class after graduate, I've been in practice for 20 years, even though I look like I'm 25 years old. Is, <laughs> Half my class has never, actually after five years of graduating, stopped practicing chiropractic. So there's very few of us actually graduating and practicing and still doing it to a high degree and there's short chiropractors also because of that. So my job is, is get things out like this like you're doing now. People understand that chiropractic is a growing field, a growing need, but there's a shortage too. 
And the last question sure. is, are chiropractors able to subscribe medications? We are not. That's one big big thing that glad about that. I mean, forgot about that question. A lot of it is chiropractors or people are still coming to us for medications. We are even though we're port of entry doctors, we do not prescribe medications, we do not do surgeries. Anything like anything prescribed with that word is not what we do. Yes, some chiropractors sell vitamins on the side for one to in their office for one, but that's not FDA approved. Anything FDA approved, we're not do not part of our license. I thought of one more question. Sorry. Yes, bring it. <laughs> Um, are chiropractors able to certify EDD for disability? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. With disability, we actually, as chiropractors, we have done their past for our patients, allow them to stay off work if need be, based on previous based on their diagnosis. If they need actually taken care of that too, we want to make sure there's a reason why. And what we do is EDD. If we do that, based on their type of work, if they have a desk job and a hurt foot. Yes, please go to work. <laughs> if a job where they're construction all day long, climbing buildings, climbing ladders. I may not have them work. Mm -hmm. And over time, my job is not only get them off of work, but it's also getting them rehabbed so they get better and maintain that betterness. In the sense where I will take someone off of work, they're going to stay home and take medication, watch bed, day, TV. Mm -hmm. I want them to do the rehab to get better, looser and strong, so go back to work feeling and staying 100%. Excellent. Well, thank you, Dr. Tony, for our, your time. Our mission is to empower our clients through Good. education, so we really appreciate you providing that education today. Fantastic. Thanks for having me. Have a good day. Oh, and we'll see you soon for my adjustment. <laughs> good. Oh, yeah, that's right. Forgot about that, too. Hey. All right. How'd that go? That, that was, was good. really good. Good? I think we're still live, though. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. They, they, know, they know me. I always go live for everything. <laughs>